and welcome back. In my video I posted yesterday, I talked about how our US housing market is not sustainable. It's not sustainable to have um, all time record highs for your average monthly housing payment uh, for home buyers looking to buy a house, and also record low housing affordability. Couple that with prices increasing in the first quarter this year. If you haven't taken a look at that video, I'll leave a link below for you guys. But in today's video, I want to share a brand new report from the MBA in which they are stating here that applications for home loans increased by 5% compared to the previous week. Also, I'm going to be touching on some more early indications of home buying demand in today's video so we can kind of gauge where our U.S. housing market is headed. And before we get started, I invite you guys to subscribe if you haven't done so already because I post frequent housing market updates so you guys can make a more informed decision about whether you should be buying or selling a house. And with that said, I have a lot to share in today's video. Let's go ahead and dive right in. So this is uh, from the MBA just posted today, which is May 10th. They reported here that applications for home loans for refis plus purchases increased by 6.3% compared to the previous week. And this report here is for the week ended May 5th of this year. So the refi index increased 10% from the previous week, uh, but it's still down by 44% from one year ago. I'm really, I was scratching my head. Why are people refine when rates last week averaged at around 6.5% when rates were at 3% back in 2020 and 2021? <laughs> Anyone's guess. I, I assume that some of these people are doing cash out refis in which they need equity out of their houses uh, due to potentially a financial hardship. But that's only a guess here. Uh, the seasonally adjusted purchase index uh, increased by 5% from one week earlier. So this is an index which measures the amount of people submitting applications for home loans to buy houses. That increased by 5% compared to last week, but still down by 32% from one year ago. So according to uh, Joel Kahn, who is the NBA's vice president and deputy chief economist, he stated the following. Mortgage applications responded positively to a drop in rates last week as the Fed signaled a potential pause at the current level of the federal funds rate. Again, the federal funds rate is a short-term rate that banks charge each other for overnight lending due to reserve requirements. Uh, that has an indirect effect on uh, mortgage rates. In any case, the Fed signaled a potential pause in their uh, rate increases and that actually caused uh, mortgage rates to decrease last week. So for example, mortgage rates for all surveyed loan types decreased over the week with a 30-year fixed rate at 6.48%. That was the average set last week. So here's a look at average rates according to the Mortgage News Daily. So on May 1st last week, which was on uh, Monday last week, um, the average 30-year fix was at 6.73%. Rates actually were on a downward trend last week. They ended the week on Friday at 6.50%, down from the 6.73% rate we saw on Monday. And going back to the NBA's report here, it says lower rates from week to week have helped buyers in the U.S. housing market. But limited for sale inventory remains a challenge for many home buyers. In other words, historically speaking, we have a lack of houses for sale for existing houses, excluding brand new home construction. And a really good visual is actually on Realtor.com's uh, website here for April, because in April, there was approximately uh, 564,000 houses for sale. This is absolutely crazy because uh, inventory levels have been on a downward trend every single month this year. To be exact, there was actually 1,000 more houses for sale in April compared to March, but that's entirely abnormal because look at 2018, 19, and 2017, for example, because in April, each of those years, inventory levels increase from March. And also, even though we have a 48.3% more houses for sale compared to 2022, which is this uh, yellow line right here, we have approximately 50% fewer houses for sale compared to the April average in 2017 to 2019. That's because back then there was around 1.1 to 1.2 million houses for sale. Now there's only 564,000. 
In addition, when we look at current levels right now, according to AltusResearch.com, uh, inventory actually decreased last week. If you guys follow my videos, I talked about how inventory levels increased for two weeks right here uh, from April 21st through April 28th. Inventory levels increased from 405,000 to 422,000 on a national level for existing houses. But last week, it decreased again down to 419,725 to be exact. And again, this is entirely abnormal because starting in March and April each and every year, we should be seeing an increase of housing inventory. So for example, back in 2019, look at this. 2019, here is 2019 right here, uh, April in 2019. So starting in, what was it? March of 2019, inventory levels went from 824,000 to 896,000 by the time we hit May 10th. Whereas this year, inventory levels have been on a downward trend due to people have rates far below current rates right now because current rates right now are around 6.5%. A lot of people have rates less than 3% and of course, less than 4% as well. And that gives people, of course, not much incentive to sell their houses due to these very low rates they have locked in. Going back to the MB's report here, it says refinance activity. Again, these are applications for refis, uh, jumped 10% to the highest level since September 2022, although there's a, only a small pool of borrowers who can benefit from refinancing due to these high rates right now. And also on a side note here, uh, for the share of applications for home loans, uh, that represent only 6.8% were adjustable rate mortgages. Okay, that's the EMBA's report here. Let's have a look at home showings across North America because this is actually where it gets really, really interesting because at this time last year, uh, which was uh, back in uh, early May, rates on average were at 5.40%, a big increase from the 3.2% rate we saw back in January of 2022. So rates went from 3.2% in January last year to 5.4% by the time we hit early May, a giant increase in a very short period of time. And that actually shocked the US housing market as you can see right here. Let me actually exclude uh, 2021 here. So starting in uh, May last year, or let's, let's call it late April last year, which is this uh, line right here, we had fewer and fewer real estate showings across North America, uh, as you can see right there. So it's gonna be interesting to see what happens here because when looking at current levels right now, we actually have more real estate showings right now compared to last year's levels. So for example, right now we have a 25.5% more real estate showings across North America compared to the first week this year. Last year this time, it was a 6.6% increase compared to the first week of 2022. So the data regarding um, early indications of home buying demand is actually gonna be a little bit confusing in the weeks and months ahead uh, because our housing market was slowing down big time starting in uh, late April last year, whereas this year we're still at very low levels, especially compared to the past couple of years. But we're not seeing this giant shock of skyrocketing rates like we saw back in 2022, which caused a big decrease in activity starting in May and late April last year. If we were to compare real estate showings this year compared to 2021, and keep in mind back in 2021, the average 30 year fix was 3% for the entire year. So back in 2021 this time, there was a 36.3% increase in real estate showings compared to the first week that year, whereas this year, it's a gain of 25.5%. Also to give you guys a quick uh, mortgage rate update here, the average 30 year fix is at 6.57%, a decrease of 11 basis points compared to yesterday. And by the way, this is average rates according to the Mortgage News Daily for people with exceptional credit, of course. Always have to provide that disclaimer here uh, for May 10th. Also for the FHA or a VA loan, that's around 6.18% to 6.19%. Also one year ago, average rates for 30 year fix was 5.40%, an increase of 1.17 percentage points 
uh, compared to 12 months ago. And the reason why average rates decreased by 11 basis points today is because the CPI report was released this morning by the government here. And the CPI report came in at expectations, which actually decreased rates today. Okay, changing gears um, slightly here, let's talk about pending home sales, which is a measure of contracts being signed uh, between buyers and sellers of existing houses. According to Redfin, uh, pending home sales decreased by 16.8% year over year. There's approximately 88,000 pending sales for the four weeks ended May 30th. Uh, back in 2022 at this time, there's 106,000. And also back in 2021, there's 115,000 uh, pending home sales. So even though we're seeing this seasonal uptick in our US housing market this year, we're still well below uh, levels back in 2022. And of course, 2021 as well. So of course, pending home sales is a leading indication of closed home sales in the next one to two months. Let's have a look at closed home sales, a lagging indicator because close home sales, according to Redfin, decreased by 21.3%. Approximately 70,000 close home sales uh, for the forest ended April 30th, but back in 2022 this time, there was around 89,000, and back in 2021, around 95,000. In regards to Google searches for homes for sale, it's actually fairly flat compared to 12 months ago. Their index is 83, for the week ended May 6th this year. One year ago, it was 86. So something uh, interesting as well is that the uh, number of searches for homes for sale has been fairly flat all year. And obviously this is not a perfect measure of home buying demand because just because you're searching for homes for sale on Google, of course, it does not mean you're actually gonna be buying a house, but it's just one metric that I follow and report on the channel here. Uh, one more thing I do want to mention is uh, Redfin's Home Buyer Demand Index, which is a measure of uh, real estate showings and or sorry, I should say uh, requests for real estate showings by Redfin agents and other home buying services, because their index decreased by 13% uh, compared to 2022. I would not be surprised to see this number um, be in the positive territory in about let's just call it one to two months here. Because back in April, 2022, their home buyer demand index fell off a cliff through mid June last year. And of course the reason for that is because rates were skyrocketing in 2022. So to start the year back in 2022, average rates were at 3.29%. By the time we hit February, we're at 3.7%. And by the time we hit March, we were at uh, approximately 4%. Then by the time we hit April, rates increased to approximately 4.88% and skyrocketed all the way until we hit right here, late October at 7.37%. Having said that, what's your biggest takeaway from today's video? Mine is how volatile our US housing market is given the fact that rates have been absolutely all over the place this year, which of course makes it very challenging to report the latest housing market updates. But in my personal opinion, I'm getting kind of flashbacks to 2022 where our housing market was absolutely skyrocketing in the first half of 2022. And because we have a lack of housing affordability, by the way, the lowest levels according to the MBA, and of course, according to Redfin, we're very, very close to all time record highs for would be home buyers future housing payments. That's based on the average mortgage payment, based on the median asking price in the US, and also based on current rates right now. Uh, the very close to all time record highs for your average monthly housing payment, which of course is not sustainable, especially given the fact that prices have been increasing this year. That's my biggest takeaway, but what's yours? Thank you so much for watching today's video. I appreciate you. Have an awesome day and I'll see you on the next video.